Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about chemical properties of dental materials. Today, we're diving into a topic that's diverse as well as crucial, miscellaneous physical properties in dentistry. Dental materials often require precision and that starts with understanding the dimensional changes, whether it's impressions, costing, or direct restorations. The magic behind these dimensional shifts usually involves chemical reactions. Different reactions may lead to expansion or contraction of the material. This means that at various stages of a material, dimensional changes can occur. Surprisingly, we can use these dimensional changes strategically. For example, during the construction of a cost metal restoration, the alloy undergoes costing shrinkage, and the expansion of the investment material can partially compensate for the costing shrinkage of the alloy. You get the idea? So, if we know about the dimensional changes that a material would undergo, we can prepare and plan our steps strategically. Dimensional changes can continue to happen long after setting. This might be due to slow setting or the release of stresses created during the setting process. Water absorption or the loss of constituents can also play a role. The degree to which material's dimensions change after setting is a measure of its dimensional stability. Now, what is dimensional stability? The ability of a material to maintain dimensional accuracy over time is called dimensional stability. For dental materials, maintaining these dimensions is key to the longevity of restorations and appliances. Now, let's talk about another miscellaneous property called density, which is often an underestimated property but is vital in designing the dental appliances. Density is defined as mass per unit volume, which means it is the amount or mass of a material in a given volume. Density depends on the type and number of atoms that are present the packing together of atoms and molecules, and the voids in the material. The high density of most metal objects makes them feel heavy. Most metals have high atomic numbers and their atoms are packed closely together into solids without voids, thus resulting in higher density values. A metal maxillary partial denture will feel heavier than an acrylic partial denture because of higher values of density. Therefore, while choosing materials, density of the materials should be considered to ensure stability and comfort for the patient. Let's say you're selecting an alloy for an upper denture component. A heavy alloy with a bulky design could lead to destabilizing forces, making retention difficult so lower density alloys with minimal bulk can be the solution. Last but not least, we come to appearance. When it comes to restored materials in terms of appearance, one of the most demanding requirements is that they match the natural color of hard and soft tissues. But what is color, really? It's somewhat subjective, and different observers may perceive it differently. There are various ways that color can be produced including selective reflection, absorption, diffraction, scattering, and interference. Selective reflection occurs when certain wavelengths of light are reflected by a surface, while others are absorbed. The colors we see are the wavelengths that are reflected. For example, a red apple appears red because it reflects red wavelengths and absorbs others. Absorption is the process by which a material takes in light energy instead of reflecting it. This process contributes to the color of the objects. The wavelengths that are not absorbed are what we see. Reflection, right? In the case of the apple, all wavelengths other than red are absorbed which is why we perceive its color as red. 
Diffraction involves the bending and spreading out of light waves as they pass around an edge or through a narrow opening. This effect can separate light into various component colors, producing patterns of different colors. An example of diffraction is the colorful patterns seen in a CD when light hits it. Scattering occurs when light rays are forced to deviate from a straight trajectory by particles within a medium, such as air or water. It affects the color of the sky. For instance, the sky appears blue because molecules in the atmosphere scatter shorter blue wavelengths of sunlight more than longer red wavelengths. Interference is a phenomenon that occurs when two or more waves of light overlap and combine to form a new wave pattern. This can create vivid colors in thin films of oil on water, soap bubbles, or bird feathers as different wavelengths of light interfere constructively or destructively enhancing or canceling each other out to produce bright or dark colors respectively. Each of these processes involve complex interactions between light and matter, and they all contribute to the rich tapestry of colors we perceive in the world around us. To standardize color measurement, we use the CIE method, which is the abbreviation for International Commission on Illumination, and it defines color by three parameters, L, A, and B where L is for perceptual lightness and A and B are for the four unique colors of human vision, red, green, blue, and yellow. To keep it easy for you, just understand that these parameters help us understand the hue, chroma, and brightness of a material's color. Hue refers to the attribute of color that allows it to be classified as red, green, blue, yellow, or any intermediate color around the color wheel. It's essentially what we commonly call color in everyday language. The hue is determined by the dominant wavelength of light and is associated with the angle in color models like HSL, hue saturation lightness, or HSV, um, hue saturation value. Chroma measures the purity or intensity of a color indicating how different it is from gray at a given lightness level. High chroma colors are vivid or saturated, while low chroma colors appear muted or washed out. Chroma describes the quality of colorfulness or color intensity relative to its own brightness. Brightness or lightness in the context of the CIE lab model refers to the perception of how light or dark a color is. It's a subjective attribute that describes the perceived intensity of light coming from a visual target. These three attributes, hue, chroma, and brightness, are fundamental to understanding and describing the complex nature of color perception, enabling consistent color communication across various fields, including art, design, manufacturing, dentistry, and quality control, of course. Manufacturers often control initial U and chroma using pigments and fillers with varying translucency. The interaction between the filler and matrix phases, along with their refractive indices, play a role in color. Over time, color changes can happen due to molecular transformation, reactions, or the absorption of stains on the material surface. We distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic staining with the latter often linked to surface roughness. These lesser known aspects of dental materials significantly impact our work from dimensional precision to color match. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to stay connected with us. Please like this video and share it with your friends if you found it helpful. See you next time. Take care till we meet again.